just right on cue. Thank you so much, Gabs. Um, as we get started, I also just wanted to let everyone know that we have live French interpretation for this session. In case you'd like to listen in French, please start the interpretation feature by clicking um, the Zoom or the the globe icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen that says uh, <laughs> I was saying a claim for a screen um, your Zoom screen um, and click uh, interpretation. And you can select to listen in French uh, by clicking French or FR, depending on what your screen says, um, and that will enable the uh, French interpretation for you. Um, I also will encourage people um, who are listening in English, if you also want to join the English interpretation room, in case we do have people coming off of mute to ask questions in French, you'll be able to understand them as well. Um, so now let's get started. Uh, I would like to just start by saying a big welcome to everyone who is joining us today. It is really such a wonderful pleasure to have you all here. My name is Liz McNeil and I'm the Senior Community Manager for the HCD Exchange. Um, usually I open the call by going through the background of the HCD Exchange, but today is a bit different because this webinar is actually all about sharing the details of the HCD Exchange project with you. The community of practice has evolved so much since its inception back in 2018. And so with this webinar, we wanted to fill members in on the work that we've been doing, the evolution of learning and community, and what the community of practice offers to members um, now in its uh, current sort of phase. Um, as always, just as we get started, um, anyone who is interested in exploring HCD, uh, the use of HCD or human centered design in AYSRH or adolescent and youth sexual reproductive health programming, um, you are very welcome to join the community of practice. All you need to do is fill in this form that I will share in the chat. There we go. Um, and today, uh, we are dedicating quite a bit of time for discussion and Q&A with the audience. Um, so as we go along, please feel free to drop all of your questions in the chat or in the Q&A function, and we'll get to as many as possible in the last 30 or so minutes. Um, and any that we don't get to, we'll be happy to follow up with responses on the forum, which you'll learn a lot about in this call. <laughs> um, now, just to introduce our speakers, actually, Gabs, can you switch to um, the next slide? This is, yeah, perfect. The speaker slide, perfect. Um, you'll be hearing from a number of members of the Secretariat team who will share about the work that they're doing across the project. We'll start with hearing from Muthoni Wachira, who is the director of HCD Exchange and is based in Nairobi, Kenya. She has over 15 years of experience in the SRHR space, working in a global role at International Planned Parenthood Federation uh, at the Africa Regional Office most recently. We'll also hear from Rim Jim Sarai, the HCD consultant on our team, who's based in Mumbai, India, who supports the learning work stream and provides technical HCD expertise across everything that we do. She has many years of experience uh, working in design studios um, in India on SRHR livelihoods and education. You'll also meet Peter Nasoko, the measurement evaluation and learning lead or MEL lead at the HCD Exchange, who's also based in Nairobi, Kenya. Peter has over 20 years of experience in m and &E and research at international NGOs, the CDC and the Ministry of Kenya. Um, and I think you all know me quite well. Um, I'm Liz McNeil, the senior community manager, and you'll uh, I'll be sharing with you a lot more about the community engagement work that we do. So, um, Gabs, if you can go to our next slide, before we dive into the presentation, we wanted to get a bit of a baseline sense of how well people actually understand the work and role of the HCD exchange. Um, so if you can follow the link, we're going to start with a quick Mentimeter. I've just put the link in the chat. You can follow the link or go to menti.com and use the code 85263705. And Gabs, if you wanted to switch the screen now to our Menti results, um, we'd love to just share 
the um, results as they come in. Um, Gabs, that is the link to voting. I'm just going to share with you in the chat privately. Um, yeah, if you go to the link that's in the notes there, the link on the bottom, that's what you, how you can present, present the, um, the results. All right, and let's see what people have to say. Okay, we've got some results coming in. Gabs, if you could also just hover us over um, the, yeah, that's perfect. So we can also see um, where people are. So it looks like people are, all right, we've got an average about 3.6 on a scale of one to five on how well you understand the work and role of the HCD exchange, one being not well at all and five being very, very well. We've got an average about of about uh, 3.6. Um, most people sort of at a three or four out of five. So thank you all so much for helping us get a baseline. Um, we're going to take the same poll again at the end, and hopefully we'll have improved at least by a little bit. Um, thanks so much, Gabs. You can take us back. Um, it's now my pleasure to welcome Muthoni Washira, our director, to share the background of the HCD Exchange, our big vision, and our new theory of change um, with all of you. So welcome, Muthoni. Thanks, Liz. And it's exciting to see that more and more people are getting to know who the HCD Exchange is, our mission and our mission and our direction. So that's exciting. Thank you everyone for joining us today to learn and interact with the HCD Exchange team. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll have known more about who the HCD Exchange is. I would like to start by asking a few questions for reflection. How well are you inter integrating adolescent and young people into your program? Gaps, if you just go to the, the background, yes, yes, yes. Um, how well are you integrating your adolescents and young people into your program? Do young people in your program feel involved? Do they feel valued? How do you measure value and impact of your programs? These are some of the questions implementers or practitioners working with young people ask of their programs. The emergence of the human center design in the last few years has elicited some excitement um, around um, the potential that, and the potential and the great promise for of HCD for programs seeking to answer these questions. While stakeholders see the potential of the HCD methodology in improving the quality and effectiveness of the AYSRH programs, they know that there are still gaps in evidence and there is need for guidance on quality application. Four years ago, when the, flag, when the HCD flagship funders felt the need to capitalize on these gains, they brought together, um, they brought together key players work, working or acting at the intersection of HCD and AYSRH with the goal of um, bringing these actors to discuss, to learn, to share, and to unify the work that was ongoing in this nascent field. Secondly, they wanted to establish the they wanted to establish a COP to bring these this like-minded stakeholders together so that they could foster learning, collaboration, networking as well as generate momentum for shaping and perpetuating HCD and AYSRH practice. This co con convening was to explore cohesion, learning and implementation. And it was held in Tanzania in 2018, after which JSI was awarded the grant to oversee the operations of the HCD exchange. The COP was designed to serve three geographies, East and West Africa and South Asia. In phase one, we convened the first ever community of practice. We also created a learning agenda. And in phase two, which is our current phase, which started in April, 2022, and will run to the end of September, 2023, we transitioned from building a broad-based learning community to accelerating access to knowledge and evidence on HCD and AYSRH for a focused set of actors. 
we wanted to reach out to um, professional and institutional actors as key players in the field. Next slide, please. Now, the HCD has evolved since its initial convening to become a knowledge hub dedicated to exploring how HCD, um, how human-centered design can improve sexual and reproductive health needs and rights for youth and adolescents. As a community of practice, we, we, are, we convene um, a global COP and, based, and we, have a, uh, we have our base in Nairobi, but have uh, a wider a, a team that is, um, that, that is based in the whole of Africa and, um, and parts of Asia. Next slide, please. Our mission is to uncover, drive, and share learning about HCD approaches and its possibility to achieve better outcomes for youth and adolescents. Consequently, our role in phase two, as I mentioned, will continue to strengthen knowledge and skills for the ecosystem players. We do believe that the HCD approach can contribute to improve AYSRH needs and rights. We we at an ecosystem level do believe that although HCD is relatively new, the ecosystem players then have the responsibility and the responsibility to uh, continue building the awareness and skills for its effective delivery. Next slide. Next slide, Gaps. Now, the COP has been playing a pivotal role in the ecosystem to support the diverse actors in the field of practice. To better understand the role of HCD exchange, we would like to introduce you to our theory of change. Our theory of change was designed with two assumptions. Yeah, just, uh, just, just keep it there. Our theory of change was designed with assumptions at two levels, at program level and at system level. The program level um, domain illustrates the role of HCD to, to implementers, designers, evaluators, and funders to increase and improve the application of HCD in AYSRH programs, while the system level illustrates the hypothesized system level impact of integrating HCD into AYSRH programming processes and its contribution in improving AYSRH program performance. The pathways in our talk, in our theory of change, provide a rationale and context for HCD work at the program level and its relationship to performance at the system level. A copy of our theory of change is currently on our website. Someone in the HCD team, please kindly share on the chat a link to our theory of change for a deeper illustration of our theory of change. Thanks, Reshmi. Through our work, we anticipate to achieve increased application and improved quality of HCD and AYSRH among practitioners and institutional stakeholders. We hope to achieve this through two outcomes, awareness creation and capacity building in HCD and AYSRH. In doing this, we hope that the AS, AYSRH programs achieve increased engagement, uptake, continuation, and continuation of FP services and, and products. Our interventions or our interventions at a program level um, at this point will influence the pathways that lead to more of a service delivery um, achievements. And then secondly, we hope when these programs intervene as they should and deliver a quality um, program for young people, the pathways they then take lead them to higher outcomes of uh, better outcomes, better health outcomes for young people, adolescent and young people. Next slide, please. Next slide. Now, 
We will continue to work as connectors and as connectors, we hope to bring individuals and organizations to resources and opportunities. This will be achieved through what we've outlined here, learning events, newsletters, community, the community learning forum, which you'll hear more about when we go into the work streams. We plan on collaborating and facilitating conversation on the development across the field of practice. Finally, we will actively continue to, cur to curate, create and share knowledge to set standard and shape the latest developments in the field. And thus we'll continue to publish and to curate learning products and set the standards for the sector. Next slide, please. Now, from, from this slide, um, we, it demonstrates the different ways in which we have intervened or we will continue to intervene. We will continue to deliver a commitment to you through partnerships, through learning events such as this one, through meaningful youth engagement achieved through our youth and leadership, youth leadership hub, a resource that we have where the youth lend us their voices and they continue to pull in or draw in their, their peers and build their awareness and capacity around HCD and AYSRH integration. We will also continue um, curating resources through a resource repository that will be launched here to, later today. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, this is the exciting part. Our vision and mission are executed by a dedicated secretariat team, which is present here today, and you will get to know each of them as they present the different work streams. And the secretariat team being the core team, we do have the support of the advisory committee, the YLH, uh, as I mentioned, which is the youth leadership hub. And the, of course, the mechanisms which enable our, who, which is our enablers of our work, which is JSI Kenya in the JSI in Kenya, and the Home Office in DC. The full profile of our HCD uh, team and the advisory committee is on our profile and on our profile in the website. Next slide, please. With this team we have been able to do a lot, to achieve a lot, but to achieve a lot through the community of practice. We have been able to bring together a diverse set of audience, create a youth leadership uh, hub, as I said, which lends its voice in our work and is instrumental in amplifying youth voices and leadership and leadership. We have also facilitated increased um, access to learning and networks, working or seeking to work at the intersection of HCD and AYSRH. And we will continue to generate evidence to improve practice. Next slide, please. At a glance, these are some of our proud moments and proud achievements. We have over a thousand community members over 2,000 newsletter subscribers, over 14, we've, we've um, facilitated or hosted over, over 40 learning webinars. We have, now, we have now curated and are going to launch later today a resource repository, which brings together um, thought leadership and um, resources around HCD and ASRH from across the group, the group. We launched, earlier this year, we launched the first ever quality and standards framework and developed, and we have developed publications on adolescent insights and measurement and evaluation in HCD and AYSRH. We will continue to put out more publications that is in line with HCD and AYSRH. To hear more about the HCD exchange, we will now transition to our work streams. I will now hand you over to Ms. Rimjim Surana, our HCD specialist, to take you through the next session. Over to you, Rimjim. Thank you, Motoni. Uh, hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you, and thank you for attending this event. Um, I'm going to be speaking specifically about uh, learning and knowledge creation, generation, and consolidation at the HCD Exchange. Um, 
So just to start us off, uh, Gaps, could you go to the next slide? Uh, I want to set some context. Uh, so the use of HCD and AYSRH programming is a relatively new concept. And I say relatively because it may uh, not be as old as some of the approaches that uh, are used. Um, and as Muthoni mentioned earlier, while there is a sense that HCD adds value to AYSRH programming, there is also a need for more evidence to substantiate that. Um, and at the HCD exchange, to be able to generate that kind of evidence and knowledge, there are a few things that we think could be done. Uh, one is to understand the existing landscape of how HCD is applied in AYSRH. What are the current gaps in knowledge that need to be bridged for better HCD application in AYSRH? Uh, identifying um, best practices that can be shared amongst practitioners so that um, people kind of know what those are and how uh, they might apply those. And then also highlighting areas that need to be explored further to enhance uh, this the application of this uh, process in AYSRH programs. Um, and we believe if these things are done well, we might as a community uh, that practice, practices human-centered design in AYSRH programs, be able to showcase the value that this process brings to programming and outcomes and also further enhance how it is applied in a quality way in the field of uh, AYSRH solutioning or programming. Um, Gaps, next slide, please. Um, so with this sort of background and understanding of the field, the HCD Exchange Secretariat, along with uh, community members from our community of practice, um, yeah, uh, we sort of identified the need for learning on knowledge creation and exchange as something that was important to do. Um, I'm just going to take you through how we're trying to do it at the HCD Exchange. We're trying to do it in three ways. One is to identify and consolidate already existing knowledge and evidence in the field, which we do in a few different ways, which I will touch upon in the next slide. Uh, the second is to support and facilitate the generation of new knowledge in the field. And the third is to expand and increase opportunities for learning and applying human-centered design in AYSRH within our community of practice. So overall, as you can see, while we do do direct knowledge generation through research ourselves, more importantly, we want to play the role of facilitators of learning within uh, our community of practice. Um, next slide, Gaps. Uh, on this slide, you will see the activities that we are engaging in to advance learning. Uh, each of these activities fall under one of our three ways of learning that I explained on, on the previous slide. Um, in the interest of time, I will not go through each of these in detail, but uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you would like to learn more about some of these. Um, that's something that we can do on uh, a one-on-one -on -one basis as conversations as well. Um, we will be carrying out these activities across uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. That's something that we've uh, done in the phase, the first phase of our project as well. And for uh, the new phase, uh, through our uh, Francophone West Africa partners, we are also expanding these activities to be done in the Francophone West Africa. That's next slide. Um, for our learning work, we uh, identified four key uh, learning areas with our community of practice members uh, that we that we focus on. Um, these include, and this is all within the gamut of uh, human-centered design as applied in AYSRH programming. So these four areas include measurement and evaluation, uh, adolescent insights, quality and standards, and youth integration. So learning in these areas is ongoing. We have already published a few uh, knowledge products or learning materials on our website. Uh, and over the next few months, we aim to make uh, some more of the knowledge that we've generated or will continue to generate um, publicly available. That's next slide. So, and this is, uh, this is sort of to take you through some of the ones that are public. So if you go onto our website, you will see the quality and standards framework that was created through consultations and explorations uh, in a working group uh, last year, which was chaired by YLabs. 
um, and then the two um, two blue documents that you see on the right hand side those are the adolescent inside landscape publications which is a study of the nature and role of insights in the human centered design process as applied to avisrh programs all of these are available to for downloading on our website and as soon as i finish talking i can share the links uh, on the chat as well um yeah and with that i'm going to close on on the learning piece and hand it over to liz uh, to go into community engagement thank you thank you so much rim jim um so as we go through community engagement gabs if you want to take us to the next slide there are four main focuses for our community engagement work. Um, the first one is expanding membership of the community of practice, including a geographically diverse member base. This also includes a specific focus on expansion into Francophone West Africa, which will be driven by a partnership that we have just launched with Path Senegal and Nukes Design. Um, the second is deepening member engagement and participation, which is key because we really want to ensure that we are continuing to create the spaces and opportunities for connecting, learning, and sharing um, that are valuable to our members and meaningful to our members. The third, we are also supporting opportunities for learning and practicing HCD in AYSRH in close collaboration with the learning team, which includes working with community members and partners to build skills and capacity for applying good quality HCD in AYSRH. Lastly, we are dedicated to amplifying youth voices and leadership across the HCD exchange community of practice through a dedicated um, youth engagement strategic plan, which is driven by our youth engagement officer, Susan, who I think you all met last uh, month in our event, and our youth leadership hub associates. Uh, next slide. When we talk about the community of practice and community members, like Mithoni mentioned, we now have over 1,100 members who have joined. Uh, this includes um, designers, implementers of AYSRH projects, evaluators, young practitioners, and funders. Um, you can click ahead twice. Um, and their experience ranges with HCD and AYSRH really ranges from uh, beginners to very experienced champions in this kind of work. Um, you can click ahead twice. Um, and we also have members that come from 62 countries representing over 470 organizations globally. So really quite a diverse group of people with different perspectives, backgrounds, and areas of or levels of experience on this topic that we really want to cater to. Um, we can go ahead to the next slide. Uh, listed here are all of the different ways that we facilitate community engagement to try and increase participation and engagement um, and new HCD AYSRH learning and skills. We run monthly learning events, some are webinars, some are panel discussions, project spotlights, and some are also skills building workshops like the one we held in June, and as a sneak preview, also the one that we're going to be holding in October as well. Um, we also have a community learning forum, which is an online discussion forum, um, which we'll walk through together shortly. And we're also working to facilitate connections between practitioners at any opportunity that we can. Um, we're also starting a new pilot format um, for learning called Learning Circles, where we will be bringing small groups uh, of people together to deeply discuss specific HCD AYSRH topics. And of course, we have our youth leadership hub um, and a youth engagement focused approach through that. Um, next slide. A little bit more about our youth engagement. We have just welcomed our third cohort of the Youth Leadership Hub Associates last month and are really excited to have them integrated across our work streams um, to bring a youth lens and then also dr to drive youth engagement opportunities for other young practitioners in the community. 
Um, the Youth Engagement Strategic Plan centers on education and skills building, empowerment and leadership growth, and creating an enabling environment within the community that is youth friendly. Um, the Youth Leadership Hub will be co-designing, um, prototyping and testing opportunities with other youth members to actually build that out together with them. If you wanna to go to the next slide, we will talk a little bit about making the most of your participation within the HCD exchange, how to get the most out of being a member. Um, and now that we've given you a background on the focus areas and how we work, we really wanted to just ground that in what that means for you as members. Um, so we understand that in order to meet the needs of and objectives of different types of members, um, we have to do different things. And one thing that we realized is that there are some people who join the HCD exchange because they're new to the use of HCD and AYSRH programming and are really wanting to learn more. So we, we want to cater to folks who are new and curious. And so for those members out there who are curious, um, the focus can really be on learning. And we encourage you to first and foremost, join the community. Um, attend uh, learning events and webinars to learn what's going on in this ecosystem, to participate in skills building workshops, to learn the skills that you can take into your work and try out, um, to browse the community learning forum for content and also to ask your questions, uh, sub subscribe to our e-bulletin that comes out on a monthly basis and read our blogs and learning and reflection pieces with um, experienced HCD AYSRH practitioners. And then also read and save resources from the repository to see what other people projects are doing out there as well. Gabs, if you can just click ahead. Oh, you're so on it. Um, for those members who are more experienced in HCD and AYSRH, the focus is really more on, well, what we're hoping is that your focus will be more on sharing and contributing to um, the evidence base and the learning. And we really encourage you also to join the community. Um, I'll share a link in the chat for that. Um, also for young people uh, to join the Youth Leadership Hub, we do have one cohort a year of that. Um, to join a learning circle or request a topic for a learning circle that you'd like to um, explore more deeply. Host skills building workshops or webinars or spotlight events with us um, or join in as a speaker to share your expertise. Um, share your work and your experiences um, on the community learning forum and maybe even answer questions that uh, maybe newer or curious members have. Um, contribute content for our monthly e-bulletin and also share resources for our resource repository, which we're very, very excited to be launching today. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, we are always also looking for people and projects to collaborate with. Um, as a community hub, we are really seeking to exchange learnings, co-host events, collaborate on skills building and learning opportunities. And we're really active, actively looking to collaborate with HCD, AYSRH projects, um, with youth networks, other hubs and communities who are interested in integrating HCD in their youth engagement work, and also institutional partners as well excuse me. Um, so please do reach out to us either on the forum or through email if you have things that you want to share or opportunities that you want to collaborate on. And I'll just share the email address also in the chat. Um, here we go. It's exchange.org. It's community at hcdexchange.org. Um, and I'm very happy now to pass it over to Peter, the moment we've all been waiting for, um, to introduce our new resource repository and do a walkthrough on how to use it. So over to you, Peter. Uh, thanks, Liz, and uh, thanks, everyone. Um, we lost a moment. Yeah, we are really excited to launch the HCD Exchange Resource Repository today with you all. And this is a one-stop shop for practitioners working at the intersection of HCD, AYSRH to access uh, different types of resources which will help to improve our AYSRH program outcomes. The idea for the initiative came some time back when we realized that firstly, there was not a lot of information available in the 
public domain. Uh, and some of the resources uh, given how nascent the practice of HCD AYSRH is, were hard to find. So we decided to create a central knowledge bank and bring information that is out there together into the resource repository. The resource repository creates existing knowledge from partner organizations on program experience specific to the global south and provides the users with the ability to also contribute and upload resources in regard to HCD AYSRH. Um, I'd like to share with you, uh, I'd like to share with you and quickly take you through some of the key features of this resource repository. So if you can let me share my screen, then that will be fine. Thank you very much. If you can all see my screen, the resource repository is hosted on our website and it on the, on the resources, under the resources, we have the resource repository. The features on the resource repository include the sort feature, which gives us the ability to, uh, if you click on the sort feature, it gives us the ability to sort our resources by popularity, ratings, uh, what are the latest publications and also alph alphabetically. Uh, if I could click on the resource repository um, and if I sort by latest or alphabetically, it kind of gives me the resource repository uh, documents alphabetically. The resource repository also has a search feature uh, where you can search by keywords, for example, the country of interest or of the, the region of interest and all that. The resource repository also uh, is organized by the HCD exchange learning teams. And these are the learning teams that are listed here. And if you click on any of those learning teams, I will click on in Adolescent Insight, it's supposed to drill into uh, only uh, resources that are on Adolescent Insights. The resource report is also organized by um, document types. And the document types as um, uh, enables the users to narrow down their search by the resources or documents that they are looking for. So we have case studies, evaluations, reports, and all that. If I click on reports, uh, it, it kind of shifts from the adolescent insights and builds, uh, builds down to only reports that are on Africa. So the functionality of the resource repository is to help us um, get to the resources that we really are looking for. Uh, on top of that, we have regions, for example, um, a region that is Africa, South Asia, and um, uh, Southeast Asia, North America, and we have resources of, for that. So if I drill down to Africa, on the context of the, what I'm searching for, adolescent insight reports and uh, Africa, it also drills down to that. So this is to make the user's navigation around the resource repository uh, easy and also to give uh, the users the power to select what they are looking for. At the end of it, um, the resource in the resource repository, we have a favorite feature that enables the user to bookmark resources creating a list of sh a short list that they can revisit later. It helps in to narrow down their search and increases the chances 
of downloading. And also, and this is the favorite uh, button. That Uh, please do take a look and share with the interested stakeholders. We will in future uh, endeavor to make some of the resources available in French because we are also working in Fran Francophone West Africa. And if you have any problems in accessing the, the resource repository, please, please do get in touch with me at the email um, that I'm going to provide in the chat. Thanks for your time, and I would like to turn it back to Lee. Great to get a walkthrough of that tool as soon as we're launching it, so hopefully people can start to get the most out of it right away. Um, if anyone has any questions about that, I really do encourage you to um, put those in the chat. Um, and now I can also walk us through. So um, Gabs, I can do the screen share um, and I will walk us through a quick tutorial of the community learning forum. Um, I think some of you, I some of you in the audience I know are familiar with us. <laughs> um, and I know have also already used the community learning forum before. Um, and so it, it actually might look a little bit different. So um, I'd love to share with you all the new things. And for those who are new, I'd really love to give you a sense of how you can really leverage this space. Um, so welcome to the Community Learning Forum. This space was created to give members the opportunity to ask questions, connect with other Uh, continue to share some tutorial videos as well. So currently, um, this is our main login page. Um, you can sort it by the latest things that are posted. You can see down the side when things were posted and how recent they were. You can also um, sort by the different categories. Um, and the main sort of functions that we have, as you can see up at the top, are for learning, asking, and participating. Um, when uh, we let's go down to participating. This is really around the events that we run. Um, we do create a new page for every event that we do where we share details about the event and the speakers um, so that you can really get a sense of what to expect ahead of time um, and get to know the projects and the speakers that are working. Um, we also share the recordings and presentation links and also resources uh, that might have been shared during the presentation. We share here as well. So it's also a bit of a one-stop shop for everything to do with our events. And as we continue to create new ways for members to participate, we'll add uh, space to here as well. Um, we, if we want to now uh, go down to um, our updates, we are really working to create a sense of transparency with all members with respect to the work that we're doing at the Secretariat. And so we have a section here that we're testing out at the moment where members of the team can share updates about the work that they're doing. Um, we also have a news and resources thread, um, which is constantly getting updated with content, as you can see, um, all kinds of different types of content, resources, um, opportunities, and uh, even job postings and things like that. We also post uh, news about webinars that are related to HCD and AYSRH. Um, we really want to keep this as active as possible. Um, in case you want to see what's going on in the HCD and AYSRH ecosystem, and also for you to share your own opportunities and updates, um, we do actively pull from this thread uh, for a newsletter as well. So it's a great way to keep us posted on the work that you're doing and the opportunities 
um, that you have in your work as well. Um, next up, uh, we've got this new section for asking questions and Q and A. Um, we um, are right now uh, compiling different questions from past uh, discussions and also uh, putting up questions that we see coming up often in the community. Um, so uh, let's see, different state. Here's a great. Here's a great. Um, Example here, what are the different stages of the HCD process? We have a number of people that have contributed here um, their own uh, responses. Um, and we also really hope that you'll see this as a safe space that you can ask your own questions as well and know that um, we will have someone here to answer them for you on the team. Um, and the best way that you can um, ask a question is just by starting in this ask thread um, a, a new topic right here. And it'll bring you up with a text box. You can create a subject line, kind of like with an email um, for, for what your question is. Um, or let's say, what is a prototype? <laughs> um, and you can ask your question here in a little bit more detail and then post it and it will go live. What is a prototype? It will go live in this thread and someone can come in and respond to this question just by replying. So it is pretty similar in terms of use to email. So I hope that it, it doesn't feel too complicated or, or technical, but if there are things that we can do to make it feel a little bit easier, um, please let us know with feedback. Uh, let me just narrow this down. And last up, we also have a new space in here um, that's all about learning about the work that we're doing. Um, and we've been compiling content from presentations that we give on a frequent basis, um, from questions that we hear um, about, you know, the work that we're doing, um, you know, why integrating, um, integrating HCD, AYSRH, um, you know, what's worth exploring there, talking a little bit about our learning agenda, um, really to help people with questions that they might have uh, frequently. So there's a whole new space with lots of content there that we'll continue to build on um, as we get a sense of what you all want to know. Um, so there's also, um, we really do want this to be a space where you can connect with other members. So if you come down to the menu here, you can see all of the users that are in the community of practice that have signed up for the community learning forum. Um, and if you click on someone's profile, you can see a little bit more about them. And you can also send direct messages. It opens the same kind of text box um, as with the post, but it goes right into their inbox. So you can actually connect with people directly through the community learning forum. Um, all content that you see here is open for anyone to read, but if you want to reply and engage, you do have to sign up and agree on, to the community participation guidelines just to keep everyone uh, safe and feeling secure, um, which the community participation guidelines are all about respect, um, listening to others uh, and hearing out other people's perspectives as well. Um, and once you've signed up, you'll just be asked to fill in a few pieces of information, which actually then flow through to your profile. Um, and I'll just show you my profile as well because one of the best first things that you can do when you join is to fill in your profile with a photo and a bit about yourself um, so that people can get to know you a little bit better. Um, and all of this information you fill in when you are signing up and it will filter right in. So it does take some of the work out of it for you, which is really, really nice. Um, so, uh, we're also working now that we've got the repository live, we are working on linking so that when you're logged into the forum, you're already logged into the repository and vice versa. Um, again, we really do see this as a space that we uh, will continue to grow and evolve and are currently testing a number of ideas and features that we'll keep you posted on um, as we're doing and ask for your, your input and your participation as well. Um, so please do take some time to explore the link is community.hcdexchange.org. Um, um, 
And um, yeah, please do share, contribute, ask your questions. And if you have any concerns or questions about the forum itself, please do flag those to us so that we can uh, continue to improve. And you can do that directly on the forum in a message to myself or in the ask section or through the community um, at hcdexchange.org um, section. Um, so I'm going to stop my screen share now, um, and I'm going to ask Gabs if you want to also um, start the screen share again. That's great. Um, and now we're going to open it up to questions from the audience. I know we've had a couple come in right now, uh, sorry, over the course of the call. Um, Someone asked uh, during the learning section, I would love to know a little bit more about the, the knowledge products, the learning products. And I know that Rim Jim did go into those in a little bit of detail, but maybe I can invite Rim Jim or Muthoni uh, to talk a little bit more about um, the learning products that we uh, develop and maybe the ones that we have in, in the pipeline as well to give a little bit more detail on our learning products. Uh, thanks, Liz. Uh, Rimjin? Tony, would you like to start and then I keep Sure, sure, sure. Um, so for our learning products, they are derived from... Okay, let me start from the beginning. So we had a learning agenda, as I introduced you. I ha we had a learning agenda, and the learning agenda was a very consultative process that um, that the HCD used to engage the community of practice actors to come up with areas where areas of interest which would speak to their work and which would uh, guide their work. So when the learning agenda was developed, it had several topics and several themes that were you know that came up. And out of all the ones that were discussed, they selected four which are the youth integration in HCD and AYSRH, measurement and evaluation, uh, adolescent insights and um, quality and standards. And for each of these, for each of these uh, learning areas, a landscape analysis was, was conducted to understand what was already existing in, in the landscape or what was already existing in practice. And based on these four topic areas that I just mentioned that were selected by the community, they informed the development of learning products based on need. So these products were, these products, yes, you know, it, we, we did a rigorous, um, or rather not a, a rigorous, but we, when we uh, undertook the um, landscape analysis, we also, on the other hand, on one hand, we did the landscape analysis. On the other, we continued to um, we continued to solicit for information through the, these learning events, and also through two working groups: the measurement and evaluation learning group, and then the quality and standards learning uh, the the quality and standards working group. And we derived a, uh, some rich not raw data, rich resources out of that, which was the things that they wanted to see. So for example, for the adolescent insights um, themes, and, um, a product by way of uh, a journey map, a, a, a practical guidance and a story of how adolescent insights are generated is going to come up soon. It's under development, but it will come up soon. And so then there is, um, under the quality and standards, a scoping study was done and the product that emerged from the scoping study was the quality and standards framework, which is available on our website. The measurement and evaluation work um, produced a landscape analysis, but it also produced several products which are also in refinement and they'll hopefully come out in the next few months. And some of them are guidance on, on uh, measurement and evaluation. Some of the things, position, like we had posi a position paper on, uh, on measurement and evaluation and a few other products for, for um, projects such as, uh, you know, projects that want either are already working in HCD and AYSRH or seeking to do that on how, what to look out for when it comes to measurement. The YI product, um, the youth integration in HCD and AYSRH uh, 
we the landscape analysis was done and what we drew out of it is a technical brief which will be coming out soon and other related products so those are the kinds of products that emerge from the four areas that i just mentioned rim jim i don't know if you want to add anything more on top of that uh so just uh, just one more thing uh, so outside of like what I, I would call the more uh, packaged and refined learning products. We also do like other forms of learning. So doing more uh, like we're doing this thing called learning and reflection sessions, which are um, speaking to uh, practitioners within the community and getting an understanding of uh, what they're doing in their programs directly from them and also reflections on, um, you know, in hindsight, how they're feeling about using the HCD process in EMS. So there's that, which is um, slightly more informal. And then uh, maybe in, in the next few months, we're also starting this uh, format called the learning circles, which is getting a group of people together in a room to have discussions and actively share learnings about their programs uh, with people working on the program. So just that. Thanks so much, uh, Rim Jim and Mathoni. Um, a question also came in on the Q&A and I know that um, both of you actually responded over just typing, but I think it's a nice question um, to actually like verbalize the, the answer and just say it out for the whole group because I think it's a really nice question and it's a, um, a pretty relevant question. So um, this person has said, I'm as a newbie in human-centered approaches within the adolescence cohort, how best can someone contribute to its success? Um, and I would love to um, just pass that back to Rimjim because your responses were, uh, I think, really lovely and really helpful. And in, in, in after Rimjim, if anyone else would like to add on to that, please feel free um, to do so. Um, I would say my responses were a little bit abstract, but uh, I, so I think one of the things is uh, just I feel like trying out the HCD process and experiencing it for yourself uh, as a practitioner is, is actually the best way to almost learn it and also buy into it because that does a lot more than just hearing from people about human-centered design. So that's one. Um, and the second is uh, actually something that's come out of a lot of the landscape analysis work that we've done, which is just the need for documentation. So even if you're using, and you can use HCD a few different ways, so uh, just documenting the process that is used, the approach that you've used, or uh, any adaptations that have been made using the human-centered design process, and also from the perspective of just like reflecting on um, using the process as a designer or as an implementer in the AYSR space. Uh, that would help in just broadening what is available as evidence for uh, for the application of this process in AYSR. So those two things. Thanks so much, Rim Jim. Um, and also, I mean, we are just in addition to that and maybe to try and help you on that journey, we are intentionally doing quarterly skills building workshops um, because we want to help put the um, the ability um, to just test things out and try things out in your own work or in your own projects um, into the hands of, of practitioners. And it doesn't always necessarily need to come from a mandate from you know, the project proposal or donor requirement, um, but just by adopting you know, one or two mindsets about empathy or, or uh, trying to, to make something and then test it out quickly and see how it goes. Um, or using a tool or an approach in doing um, can be just, you know, a quick and easy thing to do just to get the feel of it. And, and so we're doing the skills building work to help people with trying things out for the first time. And we do have quite a number of um, resources on human-centered design and using that on our website and also in the um, 
in the forum. So I would, I'll, I'll share a couple of those in the chat as well. We've got a whole page on our website for um, design resources and courses that people can take online and uh, also some sections in the forum as well. Um, and also, I mean, if anyone wants to try, I'm just pulling Mathoni from what you said, <laughs> reach out to us. <laughs> if you want more information, we're happy to talk through um, these things uh, with, with uh, practitioners that are wanting to try this for the first time. So reach out to us and let us know what you have in mind. Um, did anyone else from the team want to add on to this response? Okay. Okay. So that was the only question, the only two questions that I saw come through. Um, maybe I'll just put uh, any last call out in, in case anyone has a question or wants to share anything, you can put it in the chat or you can also raise your hand and we can come to you um, and take you off of mute to share. Um, in the, I'll, I'll just give it a moment or two. And in the meantime, I'll find that section on the website and I'll share the link in the chat for resources and guides. Um, and I'll share the link here with you in the chat. So here's a great one here. And then in the forum, um, we had an HCG AYSRH research basics. Um, and there was a ton of great uh, content that was shared there, resources and things like that that were shared there, both from the speakers at Dahlberg Design and from uh, other practitioners that had um, contributed. My internet's just being a little bit slow at the moment, so it maybe you could just give me a moment. Um, all right, just looking to see if anything else has come up in the chat or hands raised. Okay, no problem. Then. Um, I think maybe uh, what we can do now is go back to that menti. <laughs> Gabs, if you wanted to um, switch the slide, um, we've got the same question for you at the end, just to see how well uh, you, your understanding hopefully has has come, uh, hopefully improved. Um, but if it's not, please let us know. Um, but how well do you understand the work and role of the HCD exchange? Um, now at the end of this um, presentation, one being not well at all, five being very well, and you can vote using the link in the chat or by going to menti.com and using the code 59894730. And I'll put that in the chat as well. So it's menti.com and using that code. I think the link is probably a little bit easier though, <laughs> just being honest. And we'll just see what kinds of results come in. All right. Yeah, maybe do a maybe a refresh of the screen. Okay, we've improved. <laughs> I think uh, we've had a few fewer people that actually voted, but it looks like we have improved. That's really great to hear. But if you do have any questions that are coming out, um, uh, oh, so there actually there was a question. Are all the materials in the repository free to use or are some just for members? Um, Peter, did you want to take that question before we close? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the resource repository, the documents that we are getting uh, for the resource repository are free. Oh, yeah, available. So all the documents that are on the resource repository are available to the public. And that includes community of practice members and also public who are not part of the uh, community of practice members. So thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Peter. So really everything, like so much of what we do is open source. We really don't want to put very many limitations on uh, people being able to engage with us. Um, and it's just some small things that we, we do want people to log in for because if you are logged in, you have some place to save things. So the resources are there for everyone, but for example, being able to save something um, as a favorite, you have to be logged in so that uh, the, 
the website knows where to um, save something and you can access it the next time you're there because it knows who you are. Similarly with the forum, we do want people to log in because we want people, only people there uh, engaging and interacting who are um, who have signed on to the community participation guidelines and will be acting with respect um, in that space. Um, so um, if there are no more questions, that was a really good question. I really, I'm glad that, some, that someone asked that. Um, and I, I've just found, um, a, this is a really good thread um, for more resources on human-centered design. Um, actually, that whole, that whole category of the HCD AYSRH research basics has a ton of great resources there, um, just for that second question that we had. Um, all right, well, Gabs, could you take us over to the next slide? All right, uh, just to wrap this presentation up, this webinar up, I'd really like to extend a huge thank you to everyone who joined us for today's session. Um, it really does mean a lot to us when people show up um, and participate and ask your questions. Uh, please feel free to continue to explore the resources um, uh, on, the, on the resource repository, um, explore the space in the community learning forum. We'll also be recapping some of the Q&A there as well, we'll, and we'll be sharing the recording and slide deck for this presentation in the forum as well in that uh, section there for this event. Um, and I can share just where that will be in the chat. Here you go. Um, um, oh yes, and also um, if you have any more questions, anything that comes to you, we really do want to keep this discussion going. So please feel free to go into that ask section of the forum as well and ask your questions and we'll be there to respond to them um, and help you through your HCD AYSRH journey. Um, next month, we are very excited to hold another skills building workshop. This one will be uh, co in collaboration with ThinkPlace. Um, and we'll cover the different uses and best practices of facilitating HCD workshops in all it, their different forms or many of their different forms. And we'll be sending around the link to register for that in our October newsletter. And we really hope to see you there. Um, for those of you who are interested in more events like this, I really do encourage you to sign up for our newsletter, to also sign up to join the community of practice. Again, it's free for anyone to join who's interested in exploring the use of HCD in AYSRH programming. Um, and we hope that you've all enjoyed the discussion today and wish you all a really, really wonderful rest of the day ahead. Thank you all so, so much and take care. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone. See you next time.